We'll get the recording going and uh, we're recording now. Uh, let's show some agenda. So, uh, hey, I got to tell you, today is the last day to drop a course, I think. So uh, if that's you, then uh, today's the last day to do it. Uh, okay, so that's first thing. Uh, second is a lot of you have, have turned in a project. We were at 15 of 34, and now we are at 26 of 34. So this class is supposed to be fun. It's not a requirement for uh, nearly all of you, maybe maybe for a couple of you, uh, this is a requirement for perhaps data science. Uh, maybe, um, I think chemistry is an elective. Uh, maybe physics is an elective, I don't know. Uh, but data science, absolutely, it's an elective. So, uh, but the point is, is I want this to be fun uh, and I don't wanna give anybody a bad grade. I wanna give everybody an A. So uh, I can't do that if you don't turn in work. So you gotta, you just, just gotta turn in the work, okay? Uh, now also similar is the readings. There are only 31 persons out of 34 who have purchased the book. That means three of you can't do 30% of your grade. So think about that. Even if you were to do all the projects and do them perfectly, the best you can accomplish if you don't buy the book is 70% score, which is a, a low below a B. Okay, so please, everybody buy the book. If you're having trouble buying the book, let me know and uh, we'll talk about it. But you got to buy the book, you got to do the work. You got to have fun. So anybody have questions about what I have said so far? Okay. So as we do in all classes, let's begin with review. Do you have any questions? So we've talked about if and all its cousins. We've done for each member of a list, for each member of a range. There's been other items referenced in your book and your reading so far. Anybody, question? Could you go over the difference between a list and a tuple, like which one uses the brackets versus parentheses and when you would use each one? Ah, okay. Very, very cool question. We haven't talked about it in class, but apparently it's in the reading, right? Can you, uh, Matt, can you tell us where to look in the book for tuples? Oh, yeah. Let me look it up real quick. I know it's in chapter three, but I'm not sure at what part. I think it's in uh, 3.2. Okay, so uh, tuples in 3.2. Okay, so then let's also uh, give me one second. Uh, I got to put another closed door between me and the puppy. Okay, sorry about that. All right, Lily, do you want to come in? Yeah, you can come in. Lily is almost 13, so she's not going to bark. But guess what? I got one of these. 
Either way, good girl. All right, so uh, a, a list we've had some experience with, uh, but a tuple is just like a list, uh, except a couple of things. One is it's denoted by parentheses, and you can't change the values. Okay, so that's a difference. Let me uh, fire up the uh, web browser and we'll go to REPL. And uh, let me make a REPL window. And let's, let's play with uh, that for a minute. So my REPLs, let's just do in class. And okay, so actually we could just do it in the console. Okay, so here's a list. Okay, and here's a tuple. Uh, so here's L and here's T. So there is uh, a difference between these in that uh, one has brackets and one has parentheses. The parentheses uh, go with the tuples. So let's try changing L uh, sub zero uh, equals 21. Hey, no problem. Uh, well, let's try uh, T sub zero equals 21. Yeah, can't do that. Okay. So that is the biggest difference between lists and tuples. And the other part of your question, Matt, was where would you use one versus the other? Uh, well, uh, tuples behave so much like lists, but you can't change the individual members like you can with lists. So if you need to change individual members of a, of a tuple, then you can't use a tuple, you need to use a list. On the other hand, an advantage of tuples is that the uh, data structure used by Python, the, so the way that Python stores the tuple is different from a uh, list. So by giving up some of the flexibility in using a list in a tuple, by giving up some of that flexibility, you gain some efficiency. So tuples are slightly higher in performance. Okay. And they're also uh, more space efficient. Okay. Uh, there is, while we're here, and while I'm thinking of it, there is uh, every Python variable or type uh, maintains a bit of a, what's called a dictionary of the built-in capabilities of that type. So for example, if I were to say DIR, that's how you get a directory of what each type can do. So let's do a directory of the list. So the ones that, uh, I'll draw your attention to the ones that don't have underscore, underscore. Okay, uh, so things like append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, and sort. So we, we actually learned about those uh, last week. Let's see if the same values exist for tuples. Uh, no, no, they have offer fewer uh, tools. They offer count and index. So you see how the tuple uh, gives up certain functionality in exchange for speed and space uh, e economy. Okay. Okay, let me, uh, while we're here, let me show one more thing. So let's say you forget how to use 
uh, random, suppose. So from, let me import it, from random, random, import rand int, and you've forgotten how to use it. So let's, you could do a dir of rand int. And in this case, let's do pay attention to one of the uh, dub uh, method uh, functions there, the double underscore. Uh, dunders, that's, what, that's the word I was looking for, dunders, double underscores. And the one that I'd like you to take a look at is underscore, underscore, doc, underscore, underscore. So let's uh, print, well, uh, yeah, randint dot underscore, underscore, doc, underscore, underscore. Look at that, there's some help string. You could do it this way too. It's just since we're in the console and not in the shell, we could do this. Randint dot underscore underscore the doc string and get the same value. Okay, good. Uh, more questions. How about questions from the reading? So you did chapter one and chapter two is due tonight. So does anybody have any uh, troubles with any of the exercises in the book? Anybody? Nothing? Okay. Well, good. I wish there were questions. Make me the happiest person in the Zoom room. Ask me a question. Come on. I got to the mute in time. I didn't have to cough in your ear. All right, so I wanna take a look at uh, project two. Just to wanna introduce that to you. And let's see, let's go to uh, back here and pick. Okay, project two. So, uh, the purpose of this project is to give you practice using lists. Uh, and we're actually going to calculate a, a real value. This is going to uh, throw two dice, two common six sided dice, to produce uh, a sum of anywhere from two to 12. And what we're looking for is to examine the probability of rolling a particular value between two and 12 with two, two six-sided die. And is there a difference? Are some values more frequent? Do they turn up more frequently than other values? The answer is yes, by the way. In this project, you'll have to write your own function. And we'll talk about that. Uh, also, uh, you'll use, here's the list that you'll use as your data structure. Now notice there are 11 values between two, or is it 10, 11? Yeah, 11 values between two and 12. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are 11 values, but I'm asking you to create a list that I happen to call histogram uh, a list that has 13 values in it. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is so that if you roll a three, you could just put use the three as the index. And it'll go zero, one, two, three. So you would add one to location three. 
right? Because the list indexes begin at zero, but you can't roll a zero. So to make your calculations a little simpler, uh, we just make the list a little longer. And since the first two, index zero and index one, will remain zero, they won't throw off your calculations. Okay. Okay. Uh, Randint will be used to uh, calculate what the uh, random value of one die one die is. Now, by the way, folks, you can't do this program correctly by computing random numbers between uh, two and twelve. You have to do this using two separate uh, one through six randoms. So don't try to take a shortcut by using one randint from two to 12. The, the values will come out wrong. This project will also use string formatting. You can find that in chapter 3.8. So the string formatting, uh, there, are new, there, there are lots of examples on screen right now. So first, notice that all of these values in the first column here, uh, which are the dice values, the sum of two die, they are all printed in two columns. So that's part of string formatting. And a second use of string formatting here is to print a number with a maximum of two decimal places. So here's something that's kind of interesting. Stop me if you have questions. Anybody have any questions? Okay. So the user will enter, you will ask the user, prompt the user for a number of experiments to run. And in this case, you see 100,000. Now, if we were to print out 100,000 repetitions of this printout, you'd be uh, scrolling a million lines, actually, more than a million lines. So uh, as part of this program, I want you to print out this, but only once every 10 trials. OK, so every 10 trials, you print out this print, print here that you see. But even then, you'd have thousands of lines of printed output. So we're going to do something really, really old school. We're talking late 1970s. Okay, we're going to use ANSI escape sequences to move the cursor on your screen. So watch what happens here. I'm going to copy this. Go to uh, REPL, if I can find it. And uh, I'm just going to type this in. I'm just going to paste it and hit return. So those two commands instructed the console to move the cursor to row one, line one. And the second command that was printed instructs the screen, the console to clear itself. Okay, so I'm going to put that into a, a program real quick. Uh, let's say, uh, I'll just put it here. And then print. Okay, so there's my whole program. Now let's run it. And so now I've got a lot of stuff on the screen. Let's run the program. See? So the reason to do this is it's a, it's a handy way of, uh, if you're gonna print a huge amount of information, this will make it 
a little bit more, uh, a lot more concise because it'll just keep redrawing the screen over and over and over again. Let me, allow me to show you the program in operation, which I will do in a moment. And uh, CD to the buffet to PK Dice. Python. Okay, so Python three and uh, D was it DH? Yeah, okay. So here's the way your program is supposed to work. Let's say the number of trials is one. Okay, so I did one trial, I rolled a nine. So 100% of the trials that I did came up nine. Well, that's not very interesting. Let's say you're gonna do a hundred trials. Now you didn't see it there, but it actually redrew the screen 10 times. And I can roll a seven, 17% 17 of the time. But let's take a look at what would it be if it were, let's say a million trials. There's a thousand, there's a million. Now try to watch for any flickering on your screen. You see how the numbers are updating? A million is quite a bit. And by the way, if you do a million in REPL, this is gonna take a long time. So I'll show you how to prematurely abort your program. Okay. So after a million experiments, you see that 16.59% of your rolls can be expected to be sevens. There's roughly the same chance of rolling a two as a 12 or a three and an 11. Now they are different, well, because these are, these are random numbers. So I'm gonna run this again with a million trials and I'll show you how to abort prematurely, okay? So hold down the control key. I, I mean, you don't have this program yet. So when you do have the program, hold down the control and C at the same time. So control and C. Oh my gosh, I'm giving something away in the video. That's too bad. All right, well, you see what's on screen now? Make believe you didn't see it. <laughs> As Alvin leans close to the screen. Well, what's on screen right now is the string formatting necessary to print out one line from the, uh, from, the uh, from the histogram. Okay, now if you have friends in the first class, they were not as fortunate to see this. So uh, you can share this with them to make it fair. Peter, does your, does your uh, friend want to join the class too? We have room. Oh, sorry. No, that was my roommate's friends. Yeah, well, they're, they're welcome to class also. They're listening Jeez. along. They're learning. Very okay, good. All right. Okay. Because today's the last day, right? I mean, uh, if you want to, or maybe it was the last day to drop, not the last day to add. Okay, so that was like totally old school. Uh, as I said, late 1970s. But it, it's very, very helpful. Any questions about that? There's a little bit more that I want to say. Notice this syntax here where there's the, the print of what you wanted to print out. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. But look, there's the comma and then end equals an empty string. So, so far we have used parameters like here on line three, the parameter is, huh? It's a string, but it's 
significant based upon its order in the parameter list. So that's called a positional parameter. This one is a little different because it could appear anywhere in the parameter list because you're specifying the name of the parameter and its value. Professor, I think yeah. we're, we might be seeing the wrong screen. I, at least for me, I still see the green one. You know, just once, just once, I'd like to get through a whole class only showing what I intended to show. Okay, so the, uh, here's a, a positional parameter. The first parameter of a string of print is what you want to print, right? But here's a named parameter. So it could appear anywhere. And it's used by naming the parameter uh, and assigning it a value. This case, it causes no new line to be printed. So the default, let me uh, get rid of that. So the default, let's just use run this program. And so the default makes a new line. But suppose I gave it n equals empty string and ran, run that again. See that? See the difference? There's no new line printed at the end. To make that a little bit more clear, I'll print that at the end of the line. Okay. So by default, the value, if you don't specify a value of end, that's what its value is backslash n for new line. Let's run that. See, that's that's what you expected. OK, any questions? Uh, if you then put the stars after the n, would the, it output the stars before the tilde in class? Part? That's an excellent idea. Let's, let's, uh, let's try that. I don't know. Let's try that. Ah, positional argument can't follow a keyword argument, a named argument. Okay. Whoops. Okay. So that's that old school stuff there. Uh, We've talked about tuples and lists. So I'd like to uh, show you an alternative uh, to for how to choose something out of a, a middle of a list or a tuple, because we know what tuples are now. So let's uh, say that uh, L is um, rock. We've done this. Paper, scissors. And if we wanted to print one of these chosen at random, what we learned how to do, in fact, uh, let's uh, bring in some more review. Uh, for um, a counter in range 100, we did um, print L, no, we printed we need random. That's what we used before. Uh, from random import rand int. And we will print L and we'll choose one of these using randint. So randint, the smallest value is zero. And the biggest value is the way you did it before. It was the length of L minus one. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so look, there's a there's hundred of them. So I'd like to 
uh, sh show you a shortcut for doing this sort of thing. So up here, I'll say comma to include something else from random and it's called choice. So writing this would be a little bit easier. You'd say choice, choose something from the list. But I wanted you to do it the other way first so you know what was happening under the hood. So let's run that again and look, it also. Okay. And yes, uh, I believe this would work with a tuple. So I'm gonna change this from a list to a tuple and let's see if it still works. Still works. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions? Wait, can you show uh, can you show me the one you did before print choice cell? Uh, that was the way that you did it in rock, paper, scissors. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, but I'm happy to type it out. So L, which member of L, you ask, you may ask, let me put the parentheses in there. Well, it's the one that is chosen at random from index zero to the length of L minus one. Okay, same thing. Okay. All right, so I'd like you to write a real program now. And we'll, we'll do it together. Uh, so I'm going to put the spec right here. Okay. Write a program that generates D and D NPCs, that's non-player characters. Um, to do this, ask for a character name, then uh, output the name along with a number of attributes of this fake character. Uh, such as the alignment, and that could be one of um, nine. Nine? What, there are nine alignments now? Yeah. Chaotic good, chaotic neutral. Oh, those. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. How about we just do uh, the three? <laughs> chaotic uh neutral and is it what lawful lawful okay and uh, notice i didn't put them in i didn't exactly do it right i should have put them in quotes and okay so another one will be uh let's call it behavior I'm not sure what it's really called and that would be um Choices of good, neutral, and uh, evil. Okay, so how about another one of uh, race? And that could be uh, elf, orc, uh, human, and the most evil of all, Professor, okay. Then a bunch of stats like strength, dexterity, uh, constitution, 
there are a bunch of others. Uh, constitu constitution, um, uh, intelligence, wisdom. Okay. All right. That's the last one, though. I know there are many. Wisdom. Okay. Now, these stats are a little special because the stats can be from 1 to 18. And if and only if the stat is 18, there is a secondary stat from 0 to 100. Then finally, uh, some other attributes like health, health points, and that we'll just choose as uh, random from, we'll just pick it, random from 18 to 36. And maybe one more, we'll do health and, uh, um, now nah, that's enough. Okay. Now, so let's develop this incrementally. So you write a little, you test a little. Okay. So how about, uh, how would I import both randint and choice? Anybody want to tell me? Could you just import random? Uh, we could. We've been doing it differently, but let's go ahead and do it that the way you suggest. Okay, good. How about asking for a player's name, the, the character's name? Okay. What do I do? And input sequence. Good. Good. And maybe we'll give a nice, uh, in the words of Bob Ross, a, a happy little prompt. Uh, so how about, um, all right. And uh, I, I wrote a little, let me test a little. Now's a good time. So I'll just print out the player name. Okay, and I expect you to be doing this too, right? You're writing this with me. So let's try it. Okay, that works so far. So let me show you an example of what I'd want you to print next. Okay, that's what I want you to be able to output. So tell me how to do it. Anybody? Um, you could make a list for each of the three things. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I thought I did that already. It turns out uh, I, uh, I'm mistaken. I put it in the comments. So great idea that we, we need that. And I'll uncommentify it. There. All right. Now what? Random dot choice from those lists. Oh, and now we're going to see why we might want to import it a different way. So let's try. Okay. So uh, player name is a, uh, and then you said suggested random dot choice, right? Random dot choice. 
and uh, we'll give it the alignment list. And then random dot choice, and we'll give it the behavior lit uh, one. And then we'll give it uh, random dot choice, and we'll give it the race one. Let's try that. Got a lot of orcs. Ah, finally. Okay. Now, here you start to see why you might want to use the other means of importing. Because look at all this extra typing I've got. Random dot choice, random dot choice, random dot choice. If instead we import it this way from random import choice, then I can remove that one and that one and that one. Okay. All right, so good. So now it comes time to, well, we got one of these easy stats to do because it's, it doesn't have any weird rules to it, about 18. Let's print the health points. Uh, let's see, print health. And how do I do what I said in the comments? I wanna choose a random number from 18 to 36. Anybody? How do you choose a random integer? Well, wouldn't you first have to import random? Yep, so let's go ahead and do that. So I can import multiple things by separating them with a comma. Okay, and then okay, rhymes with tint, rand int, right? And what would the first value be? The minimum value, 18. You guys are killing me. And the largest value. <laughs> okay. All right. So I wrote a little, let's test a little. Okay. Still with the orcs. What the, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, okay, now it's an elf. All right, now. I want you to write a function to do the stats. And I want it to work like this, watch. Um, strength. Stat. And the function, uh, let me add it up here. That should print like either a number uh, if it's not 18, or if it is 18, it should print like this 18 slash space slash space and the other number. Okay. So here's how you create your own function, and then we'll we'll talk about why having functions is a good thing. So you can create your own function by using the keyword def, and you give it a function name, parent, parenthesis, and your parameters. 
Now, in this case, there are no parameters, so it's an empty parameter list. So I'm going to demonstrate for you a behavior known as stubbing, S-T-U-B-B, boy, boy, I-N-G, stubbing a function. I will just return uh, not written yet. Okay, so that is a complete function. It starts out with uh, the word def, then a function name, parenthesis, any parameters you want to define. In this case, we don't need any, we're just starting out. And then to end the function, you would, if you want to return something, you would say return and whatever it is that you want to uh, return. Now, what does it mean to return something? Well, look here on line 35. Somehow we're printing out a value. That value is returned by randint. So I've stubbed out stat. Let's see if it works. Okay. So the reason why I want you to use a function for this is because we have a whole bunch of statistics we need to print, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, and wisdom. So just, uh, let me just copy this down here. Now, because we have a function that will take care of printing the stat, I can simply reuse that code over and over and over again. So here's the dexterity. Uh, and stat. So that code will get used over again. Here's another one, print constitution. I get to use my work a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time. I don't have to write that code over and over and over again. And that's one of the reasons why you want to be able to use functions. You want to be able to write your own. Well, not wind intelligence. That's what you do when you uh, work at Microsoft. Okay, so uh, let's try it. Okay. Questions? So now let's add the proper body to the function stat. Okay. Let me re uh, I'll refresh your memory. Choose an integer between 1 and 18. If and only if the value is 18, also generate another value, one zero to 100, and return both as a single string. Okay, so please work on this and talk to the whole class. Ask questions, give advice. So now it's a mutual collaborative effort to write that function.
professor? Yeah, go ahead. If uh, I got this with a project too, and didn't know if it, the error says stint module in the corner brackets, I guess. What does that Do you know what that means? The error is if it says stint module. Um, STDIN, stint. I don't know. What that, oh, STDIN, stand yeah, in. I, Interesting. Yeah. Where's that showing up? Uh, I'll enable you to show your screen and. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, stop sharing and uh, let me enable you to show your string a screen if you're willing. Yeah. Uh, please show me. You can do it now. Oh, I see. Yeah. So right here. I don't know. Oh, what that you're. Line yeah, you're in the console. Uh, so first let's fix line one in your program. Yeah, it's referring here. Yeah, so, uh, so change the first occurrence of import to the word from. Just take it all out or just the first part? Yeah, replace it with from, yeah. From random, import, choice, and randint. Don't need to add okay, well, it. Yeah, you got a problem over there. So uh, just to get us going, why not delete that? Yeah, delete that too. Okay. Okay. And uh, try running. Okay, good. So, so that's as far as you are. Okay. Okay, you can keep going now. And I will share my screen again so that you're able to see what we've done so far. Okay, if you could stop sharing yours. Okay, I think I did there. Okay. I know it's nice to share, but not in this case. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I tried doing an if and else thing. Um, and like the else would just be printing the one through 18. But for some reason, it says that that's invalid syntax. Is there something that I need to put after else before print? Well, I uh, do keep in mind that stat needs to return a string. Return, it's not supposed to print. So you remember it had, um, it had uh, return not written yet. Now, what happens if I just stub this in by saying return eight? Will that work? Okay, so you're starting to get the idea? Okay, yeah, thank you. So instead of print, it's return. Right, okay. so stat does not print. It calculates and returns the result of the calculation. I just tried that again, and it still says invalid syntax. All right. Can you show us your screen? Mm -hmm. it, it won't let me. Okay, so there's the green button that says. Uh, yeah, share. I click it. It says you cannot start sharing screen while other participants are sharing. All right, do it again. All right. Good, it's coming up. Uh, here, I'll make that bigger. Or not, not bigger, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. Here. All right. Um, so, yeah, so I did like the if, like stat value. Is 18 
then return stat value with the slash thing, then random between one and a hundred. Else just return stat value. Okay. But then so it says can, invalid syntax. Yep, I do see that. Uh, can someone help Michael with his syntax error? If you make your window smaller, the effect may be to make our view bigger. Uh, so you're sharing the whole desktop, so that's not going to help. Oh, okay. uh, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> yeah, so so never mind. Uh, make this full screen again. Yep. So can someone who's got good eyes, good eyesight, help Michael fix his uh, red line of doom? Does that Michael, help? There you go. Um, you're forgetting a colon and you're uh, forgetting to indent. So I do the colon here and then I need to indent That's this. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> and then indent after. So indent the return. So it's on line 15. Okay. There you go. Thank that you. Looks, that looks much better. Let's try running that. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I would suggest, Michael, that you keep running that because you do have a bug. You just haven't hit it yet. That's one of those things about random, right? <laughs> oh. Whoa, hold on. Where is that? That's not good. Did, did you run into a problem? I see, like, wait, hold on. I think that was my fault because I didn't put in the name, though. So. Mm. I'm confused. I don't see a problem yet. OK. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing. If you could bring up yours again. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about the problem that I saw. Boom there, I'll do that and then do that. I actually can make yeah. this like a square or whatever. Yeah, if you can change that shape, just, we need more room. Yeah. There. Okay, it, uh, click on the blue file folder kind of papery looking thing on the left. Keep going, yeah, click on that. All right. Okay, so line 13 mm -hmm. is, uh, let's see, ah, yes, and you even came up with it. Now look on your shell side and you see wisdom colon, uh, 18, a string, and a 19. And it's surrounded by, guess what, parenthesis. So that's an example of a... Oh, I see. Why? An example of a... Shoot, I don't know. Uh, I forgot this. It begins with a T and rhymes with oople. Tuple? Yep. So you return to tuple. So do I just get rid of these parentheses? But I feel like. Well, one more no. parenthesis to get rid of at the end. Yeah. But okay. wouldn't that now, be wrong? Well, it's wrong in a different way, though. Yeah. So try it and see if we can hit it again. Now, you may have to run it a bunch of times. That's the problem with random, right? That's the problem with what? Random, because you have to run it a lot until you get it. Yeah. So. To cure this and make it easier to debug, you might put in some temporary code that hard codes stat value to 18. So on law after line 11. Yeah, so do, do a new, uh, well, you can say 18 to 18 and that should come out as 18. Okay, but what we wanted was not a tuple, we wanted a string, a single string. Uh, 
So, uh, so I'll have you stop uh, sharing. Okay. And I'm going to ask the class. Do you recall how to change a string into a number? Uh, is Anybody? It, isn't just in parentheses? Yeah. In parentheses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. And now, do you recall how to do the opposite, which is to turn a number into a string? Okay. So I'm going to write some code in Michael's style, because there are many ways of writing this function. But you've seen his code, so I will uh, continue in his uh, the way he was doing it. So he had uh, stat value equals rand int, and it was from one to eighteen. And then he had if stat value is eighteen, and there was a return of something. Otherwise, there was a return of something else. OK, so he had, uh, so let's handle the something else case. So this is like a value of 2, 5, 9, 11. So to turn a number into a string is the opposite of using int would be str value, sorry. OK, but what about this case? All right, so this would be 18 slash 23, for example. Okay. Starts out with the same same thing, 18, so stat value. But how do you concatenate strings? You remember? I can wait. I'll, you can look it up if you want. You can say Google, uh, perhaps uh, Python, concatenate two strings. Plus? Yeah. So add two strings together, you use plus sign. But it only works with strings, right? That, if you're going to concatenate two, two values, they both have to be strings. So plus space slash space. That works. Plus, and I'll leave that to you. Hello, Lily. Really. Here you go. Okay. You can do it. Can you do str and then randint zero to 100 to make perfect. that all the string? Yes, perfect. 
Okay, let's try it. All right. Uh, yep. No. No. That's the problem with random, right? Okay, so I've grown uh, frustrated. So I'll just hard code in for a test uh, in 18. And for some reason, it's not listening to me. All right. Yay, connected. Okay, so it does work. Now let me remove it because it was just a test. It should be a randint of 1 to 18. Okay. Okay. Now let me know when everyone. Well, let me just ask you a question. Because what I was about to say doesn't make any sense. Is there anyone who is still writing their program? Anyone? I've got like a weird problem with mine. Okay, Santana, please. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and you can share. All right, let me. Oh, God, I have so many things hooked up. One sec. Right, yeah, take your time. Is it showing up? Yep, see it. Okay, good. I was confused on what the syntax problem was with the else because i think i have everything set up properly okay okay on line four you don't need the parentheses around the 18. Oh. let's see if that helps oh and i see something other else that's curious on line six what why did that double itself okay I don't know. Right. Okay, well, give it a try now. All right. Invalid okay, syntax also, still. Yep, I, and I see something else wrong. Uh, draw your attention to line five and seven and look at where the, the letter R is. Mm. They're in different columns and Python is dependent upon indentation. Okay, try it again. Okay, so on line three, how many spaces do you have? Just one. You have just one? I see two. Oh. Uh, I'm confused myself. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, the, the your goal here is to make them all the same. Oh. Okay. And then on line five and line seven, you need one more space. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, else, if else. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I was trying to mute so that uh, you wouldn't hear me coughing your ears. I was using some other gizmo and it was late. But I see another problem. I see a problem on line five. 
more than five. Yep. Okay, can someone help Santana? Looking at line another five. Another parenthesis, right? Yeah, Jonathan. Oh. Did, yeah, one more print. Ah, okay. All right, let's look. Okay, cool. Cool. So I'm on line three, you may want to put that back to uh, one through 18 instead of 17 right. through 18. Line Definitely three, I think. I'm using okay. this next time I DM. <laughs> See, there you go. This class has already improved your quality of life. See, did I tell you this was going to be useful in other parts of your life? I was telling the truth. Okay. Now, uh, we got here more quickly than the AM class, which seems to, you know, all, you know be the rule. So uh, I'd like to use a little bit of extra time, a little bit of time to make the output prettier. And this will have to do with string formatting. So the first thing I want to try is notice how health is short and strength is longer and dexterity is longer and constitution is really long. Uh, I'd really like all the words to line up and all the numbers to line up. So that can be done using string formatting. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll do it in the first line and then <clears throat> you could do uh, in the next. All right, so here is um, another, it's an empty string dot format there. And now the string formatting, <clears throat> makes use of braces inside this template. Okay, so I'm gonna try this, um, 10 S. Let's see what happens. Hmm, interesting. So notice there's a bunch of spaces now between health and 32. And actually it looks like we need a bigger number. Let's try uh, 14. Try that again. Okay, so let's repeat that. That looks pretty good. Let's repeat that now. So I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna do it to all of them. And now let me fix, let's see. I need one more parenthesis here to terminate the format. Okay, let's try the program. Ooh, I'm liking it. Okay, I'm liking it a lot. Mary is very wise. But has a very thin skin. Constitution is one. So 
So just for a moment here, let me do that over there. Let's try that. Let's see what that does. That doesn't do the right thing. Uh, how about that over there? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? There's another feature to the formatting. <clears throat> so the 14 says what you're going to print next, put it into a block of 14 characters. And originally we had just that. So that's left justify. But now we can choose to write justify also. Isn't that interesting? Let's see what that would look like. That's also kind of cool. I like that. What is the S? The S means what should go there is a string. To tell you what, let's try. Let's try uh, eliminating. Here's what I'm. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put this parenthesis from in the middle. I'll move it to the very end, and I will do percent and uh, uh, two. Oh, that's also, oh, for the health. This is the only one it's going to work on. Uh, uh, 2D for integer. Or is it I? Okay, so let's try that. Okay. So there's uh, print this integer. That's the D in two spaces. But for the other ones, um, they're not integers. Remember, stat uh, returns stat returns a string. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have questions about what we have here? So the um, the two D thing that just like truncates it. If it was like two hundred and fifty, it would just show twenty five. That's a great question. Uh, the answer is, if it's smaller than two uh, positions, it will take two. But if it's bigger than two positions, that's the number two here. If it's bigger, it'll take as many as it needs. So it, it's not going to be truncating. That's the minimum. But uh, I draw your attention to the following. In this case, we have a print on line 43, we have a print uh, of one set of output that is using string formatting then a comma, and then another string. But on line 42, uh, both of the items being printed are inside the same format. So there's a brace and a closed brace, an open brace and a closed brace. That's where the values will be slotted inside, like a template. Okay. Well, I don't want to go too far ahead of the AM class. So uh, you guys, you, you folks all chose wisely in that being in the PM class, uh, we're just so much better at presenting the information that if you want, we can end early.
So any questions? I got one question. I'd love to hear it. With the stat value and the random, like how it's one to 18, how mm -hmm. would you make it so that you would have like an additional like bonus to that if you wanted to like add two on top of the result? So you wanted to bias uh, the, the answer towards a higher value? Yeah, so like if uh, the integer turned into like a seven, it would turn into like a nine. It would come out as. Okay. Well, uh, if we add two, that would give us a one through 20. But we would, but I think you still want to stay at 18. So take, if you added two outside the parenthesis, then subtract two inside the parenthesis. So this will give you a three to 18. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So let me show you a different way of writing this function. So I'll just comment out everything so that you can still see it on screen. But here in this way, I'm going to have only a single return statement, which is a good practice. So how about this? Uh, stat value equals uh, randint, just like before. And instead of keeping it as a number, I'll change it immediately into a string. So then if stat value equals the string 18, then I'm going to add, concatenate more information to stat value. Hang on. Equals, whoops, equals stat value plus plus and now I have uh, all I have to do is return one once and it's actually quite a bit shorter let's try that make sure it works write a little test a little Good. So what do you think of the different version? I've given her two cookies and now she expects more. So any opinions? I like this version, but I think I enjoy the first version more. I'm not sure why. It just seems more fun. Okay. Well, which is the right version? Anybody? Wouldn't both of them be right because they both work? Correct. So for any anything that you can use a computer for to a program to calculate there's an infinite number of ways of going about it so um, have you ever considered that some infinities are bigger than others now, for most people infinity just means one thing and in infinity means infinity so how could you have one infinity being bigger than another if they're both infinite. Has anybody ever thought about that? Okay, I can give you an example. The uh, range of uh, 
positive integers is infinite. But the range of all integers is bigger than the range of just the positive integers. Right? So there's an example of one infinity being bigger than another. The reason why I brought it up is I have to admit, there's an infinite number of ways of doing something in a program correctly, but I suspect there's a much bigger infinity of ways of doing it wrong. You want to leave the room? Okay. Permission to leave the room is granted. Oh, now I have another. Now I have another two. Hey, you know, uh, can you pick up the puppy? We haven't done a, a, a puppy fix today. Jesus wants to go outside. Maybe no puppy fix today. Any uh, anybody have any questions? Okay, so you have a reading that's due tonight. And you have a project that's been assigned. And I've gone through that project. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. Hey, and uh, by, uh, do you know how to use the reaction button in Zoom? Let's see, you, uh, uh, where are the reactions? Uh, eh, it's hard to find. I think you only find it when you're on full screen. And there should be a tab at the bottom. Uh, okay, yeah, there is a reaction. So I'm going to say thumbs up. And then after a while, it goes away. Okay, so by using the thumbs up, let's let's everybody get away, uh, go away. Go away, everybody. Uh, show me by thumbs up how many people are members of Discord. Use the Discord service. Uh, quite a few of you. Okay. Now, on Thursday nights from 7 to 9 p.m., there is a Discord server where computer science students gather to ask questions of each other, give help to each other, and also to ask questions of the professors. So let me see if I can figure out, because I'm not a Discord expert, let me see if I can figure out how to put uh, one of the invitations to the Discord server into the chat. And it, please copy it down if you're interested. And uh, Discord is still starting up. I think it's running. No, it's not running. It gave up. <laughs> okay, now it's doing five updates. It's still starting. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see, go to this and invite people. Copy, here it comes. We have a Discord meeting Thursday nights. There, it's in the chat. So Thursday nights, if you join Discord from 7 to 9 p.m., I'll be there and other people will be there as well. So you can get some help. When is your project due, the, the next project? Anybody? February 2nd, I think. Okay, February 2nd, I think is a Tuesday, is that right? Yes. Okay, so that means between now and when the project is due, there's going to be a barbecue where you can get help. Okay? Okay, so with that, uh, why don't we uh, say goodbye and the video of today's class will be online 
in a few hours. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good yeah, one. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome.